Is a cheap cordless power drill any good? That is a question I've been asking myself for a while now because I was in the market for a cordless power drill. I can get a well-known brand like Makita which sells a kit with two 18 volt 3 amp batteries, the drill and a charger for about $200. But the thing is I'm using a tool like that maybe once every 3 or 4 months for a couple of drills, generally soft materials or maybe to assemble some new piece of furniture and I don't feel like spending $200 for a tool that's not going to be used and worked for that money. So I started looking at alternatives. These are the uh, clones of Makitas and Dewalt's available for probably less than half the price of the genuine stuff. But why go that route? I don't care about what's written on the label and the color of the drill. One thing I care about is the shipping of the item, preferably I would like something that can be ordered and shipped from the EU for fast delivery and no additional taxes being paid for customs. So I started looking at Chinese brands, this particular model got my attention on banggood.com, they call this a 36 volts cordless drill, it comes with two batteries and it's available from a warehouse in the EU. Now if we do the math, 36 volts would mean about 9 or 10 lithium ion cells in series which I highly doubt we'll find in those battery packs. It makes no sense to pack 10 cells in series to raise the voltage that much and the uh, 10 cells probably wouldn't even fit inside the battery case. They also claim the battery capacity is 9000 mAh, well I don't believe that either because a good cell is about 3000 mAh so it would have to be uh, 3 of those cells in parallel times 10 in series, it would need 30 cells in there to reach those specs, that's crazy. But we're used to seeing exaggerated specs on the Chinese made products, so let's look past that. The drill has two speed settings, low and high as well as various torque adjustments and they also claim it's a brushless motor. But most importantly this drill costs $46 shipped to the EU, which is quite a bit less than the Makita we discussed earlier. Now if this lasts one quarter of how much a Makita would last, then this should be a pretty good deal for me as a hobbyist. And here is the drill, it comes in this storage box, Banggood sent me a unit for the purpose of this review and from the start I can say this carry case is quite low quality, I mean it's fine for delivery but beyond that point I don't think it's really usable, mainly because it's this cheap plastic, this for example this locking mechanism failed right away and I would prefer having a nicer case because uh, this tool will mostly be sitting in the carry case. Inside the box we get a manual which is in uh, English surprisingly. We get the uh, drill tool, two batteries and a charger. I must say this charger feels very light in my hand and it doesn't even come with an European plug or any adapter in the box. There is no label on the charger, I suppose there should have been a label here but there isn't one. We'll get back to this uh, charger later in the video, let's take a closer look at the drill itself. I quite like the color scheme they got going on here, uh, it's uh, black with grey and uh, the buttons are red, these uh, grey parts are soft rubber which is molded over the uh, hard case and that improves the grip of the tool. It seems like we also get the obligatory nylon strap as with every single uh, product made in China. And this part which looks like aluminium is actually silver painted plastic. But you would expect that in this uh, price range. On the sides there is uh, these uh, recessed areas where there should have been a, a label I suppose but if you order enough of these I'm sure the manufacturer can put on here whatever you like. But on this particular unit there doesn't seem to be any branding at all. Overall it feels like a uh, solid construction, it, it doesn't move or crack when it's uh, when I apply a bit of force on the case, so I, I would think this is a solid build, but I can't speak on how well this would survive for example a drop on a concrete floor. 
On the battery connection it looks like we only have a couple of tabs, it's, it's just plus or minus, so that means it doesn't care about the state of the battery. But let's slide in one of the batteries on the tool. It's a really tight fit and I believe the tool is well balanced in my hand with the battery attached. And after turning this on all sides, I now realize there is no battery charge indicator uh, on the battery or the drill itself, so there is no way of knowing the charge state of the battery. I don't like that, that's not a good place to be saving money, it would have cost them 30 cents to add a battery indicator with LEDs and in my opinion that's a must have on a tool like this because you want to grab the tool, check the battery and go and do your job or if the battery is not charged you want to know about that so you can charge it. We have a small LED on the front of the drill and this could be useful when used in dark corners. Up here we have the uh, switch for the uh, low or high range and the, the drill feels like it has some kind of brake system when you stop pressing the, the switch it feels like the chuck is stopping on, on a brake and I can see some uh, sparks in here uh, through these vents and they were claiming this is a brushless motor but uh, seeing sparks in here through these uh, vents uh, can only mean one thing this is a brushed DC motor and those sparks are coming from the brushes which sit behind the uh, motor. Once again considering the price range that isn't necessarily surprising and with moderate usage it would probably last enough as it is with a brush motor it's just that in the product description it was a, a different story and that's not a nice thing. The battery is where most of these uh, cheap power drills have huge cost savings. They tend to use low quality lithium ion cells which don't last very much before they start losing capacity and they generally don't have a great capacity or discharge current to start with. So let's see what they're using in this one. I quite like the fact that they are assembled with screws and not sealed in. This means they are repairable if something is to happen. You can just get in here and replace the cells or the electronics. This must be the easiest to take apart battery pack that I have ever seen. There is no glue in here, no ultrasonic welding of the case, so it's dead easy to get in here and do some maintenance. Even the battery pack plus the electronics come out as a whole. And the build quality is good, we got some clean soldering happening in here, uh, we have some nice uh, battery tabs which are spot welded and then soldered directly to the PCB. Everything looks uh, nice and clean in here, the cells are marked uh, INR 18650P rated for 1500 mAh with quite a recent manufacturing date of October 2019. I don't know who the manufacturer is but that rating of just 1500 mAh is too low compared to modern cells which are in the range of 3000 mAh. There are 5 cells in series here giving this battery pack a rating of just 1500 mAh which is well below what they claim. When fully charged to 4.2 volts per cell this pack would be 21 volts in total hence the voltage on the charger which is 21.6 volts. The maximum voltage of the pack plus a small margin. And I would imagine we have some form of uh, battery charging or protection happening in here because I suspect the charger is just a DC power source and the actual charge termination is handled inside the battery pack. The positive from the charger goes directly to the uh, positive of the battery pack through this red wire while the uh, negative coming from the charger goes through this uh, diode up to this uh, MOSFET, I would assume this battery is for reverse polarity protection. So depending on how efficient this diode is, we already have a voltage drop happening in here plus a voltage drop on the wire from the charger. Remember we are starting at 21.6 volts on the charger but we might already be losing a volt up to here uh, which would uh, get our voltage to something like 20.6 volts 
which is under the full voltage of the pack. The battery management chip is a CM4051 which is uh, a battery protection system designed specifically for 5 cells battery packs. This will protect for over voltage, over current and over temperature conditions by cutting off the uh, connection through this uh, big MOSFET. I'm not seeing a shunt resistor used for current uh, measurement, but it could as well be uh, some track on the PCB, for example this one right here, which could be used uh, for sensing the current. We can see the uh, thermistor they are using for sensing the, the uh, temperature and offering the uh, over temperature protection but this thermistor is not at all coupled with the uh, battery pack so by the time this thermistor gets to a temperature that will trigger uh, the uh, protection uh, this battery pack might already be at a high enough temperature to cause damage. There is also provision for a through-hole uh, NTC thermistor in here and that is what they should have used. Uh, they should have installed one of those slim thermistor uh, which would drop down between the, uh, the cells of the battery pack and be coupled directly to the cells to sense uh, the uh, cell temperature. But once again I think they uh, didn't use that for cost reduction. Now let's also take a look at the charger. Like I said earlier, it feels very light, but it's assembled with a screw, so it's easy to take apart. Measured on the output, we get a voltage of 21.6 volts with a center positive. I think it would be something like 1.5 or 2 amps rated. Uh, there is a bicolor LED. It's green when it's idle and it goes red when it's charging. Uh, I think that's just an indication of load, they probably have like a shunt resistor in there and when the current goes above a certain value, something like 50 milliamps, it switches to red. Inside the charger there isn't much happening, it's just a very low quality, low cost AC to DC power regulator. It's like the lowest part count power supply that they could possibly assemble. You don't have adequate input protection or filtering. I don't, don't even want to look at the output of this thing with an oscilloscope, it must be terrible what it puts out. We do have enough uh, clearance between primary and secondary side, but you are relying on that tiny low quality transformer for isolation. I really don't like what I'm seeing here, so I would probably replace this with something like a laptop uh, power brick with a uh, similar voltage. For example, I have this 20 volts laptop charger that I could uh, easily modify to output 21.6 volts and it would feel much safer to use one of these and it would feel much safer to use uh, one of these which has all of the uh, safety ratings. I measured the RPM at the chuck and it was about uh, 340 RPM on the low range and about uh, 1250 on the high range. This pretty much corresponds to the specified ratings which are 350 for the low range and 1350 for the high range. A bit low on the high range though. Next let's take a look inside the drill. I know many of you would like to see how this one looks on the inside. and There are a bunch of uh, these uh, torx screws to remove. So I'll speed up the video now. This is also a uh, nice occasion to take off the nylon strap because I don't like that. I'm not much of an expert on uh, molding but this doesn't look bad on the uh, inside. There's plenty of uh, reinforcement ribs in here and the overall quality of the tooling seems to be pretty nice for this uh, plastic handle. These are the markings on the switch. This is like a potentiometer. Uh, I don't recognize this, but I like the fact that they have a tube stamp in there. I don't know if that's genuine or not, it might be. And uh, there is like a small heatsink on the back of the switch. This is our DC motor. There are some markings on the motor. 
and in there there are the brushes that we uh, saw were producing those sparks in here we have the gearbox of this uh, drill i'm not going to take this apart because uh, there is a high chance i'm not going to be able to put it uh, back together the plastic the housing is uh, made out of uh, plastic uh, but i'm i'm not sure if the gears inside are also plastic or not i would assume not because uh, plastic gears I don't think will last a, a long time on this tool if they were using plastic gears. I've put the drill back together and now I can give you my final impressions on this. I'll start with the bad things. The charger is very low quality. I will be replacing this soon with a laptop charger that I will modify to output 21.6 volts. Now the battery packs are okay, a bit on the low side on capacity, but what I miss most is a battery level indicator and a uh, thermistor which is coupled uh, directly to the cells themselves. I will probably do a separate video on how to improve the uh, safety of these battery packs and how to add a battery level indicator. The carry case is also uh, pretty low quality. I would have loved to have just a slightly better one with like working clips, uh, but this is what you get. Uh, the ratings they show in the product description about the uh, battery are uh, mostly overrated except for the RPM figures of the tool itself. But on the plus side, this drill will cost you $45 shipped within the EU, so no extra tax, no hassle with customs. The plastic parts are pretty good quality and in general it's well put together. The tool itself doesn't uh, scream low cost when you touch it, it's more like an average quality. The battery pack is uh, held together with uh, screws, so that's really easy to uh, repair or to upgrade. And as it is with moderate usage, I believe uh, this tool will definitely do its job for a few years, uh, so it's perfectly adequate if you're an electronic hobbyist like myself which only occasionally needs a battery powered drill. For this price I don't think you can get any better and that concludes my review. I'll give this one a thumbs up but this is mainly because of the cost. If uh, this was more expensive like uh, anything above 60 or 70 dollars um, I would probably not like it as much and not consider it's uh, worth the price. Thank you for watching this video, don't forget to check out the links in the description and stay subscribed because I will do a follow up video on how to improve this uh, battery pack or the uh, charger of this unit.